Hey, what's going on, guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm back with a cheap Android TV box. Now, this is the MXQ Pro. You can get them on Amazon or eBay for $30 to $40, bucks, depending on where you are. Most of them ship from China, so you're going to have to wait on it unless you're in the U.S., and you can probably get one out of New York or Maryland for about $30. Very nice box. I'm actually surprised at the performance. This thing has a 2 gigahertz S905 quad core CPU, 1 gigabyte of RAM. You can opt to get the 2 gigabyte version, but it ups the price by about $30. So I just went with the 1 gigabyte version. It seems to be running great, but if you need that extra gig of RAM, which it will help out, then you can spend the extra money. But this thing is pretty awesome. I am very enjoying it thoroughly today i wanted to test out playstation 1 emulation on this box i'm going to be using e psxe now there's a couple other ones you can use sorry about that you can use fpse for android but i really prefer using the e psxe we're going to get into it here i have a few games to test before i start I am using a Mad Cat's CTRLR controller. Now this is a Bluetooth controller. It comes with a dongle because the MXQ Pro does not have Bluetooth. So you plug the dongle in like a wireless keyboard dongle that comes with the controller. It connects automatically and it just works. These are about anywhere from $29 to $39. So that would really bring your price up to about 60 bucks for the box and the controller. And it's still worth it at $60. Before you start running EPSXE on this box, we're gonna have to go to preferences and we're going to have to download the plugin package. And to do that, it's very simple. We'll scroll down here till we get to GP, GPU plugin. I'm gonna switch this to mouse mode the controller also has mouse mode, which is really cool. You need to click on this little icon right here in the top right hand corner. That will download your plugin package. It does not come installed. A lot of people miss this, and this is what we need for our Open GPU plugin. So, with that said, let's get into it and see how this thing performs. We're going to try Bloody Roar 2. Now, I've had this lag on a lot of other systems, even with the GPU plugin enabled. Up in the top left hand corner, you'll see my FPS. Bloody Roar. So, if you've never played Bloody Roar 2 or 1, I suggest you do it. I believe they had a Bloody Roar 3. It may have been for PlayStation 2, but I did not like that one. This is far better. Now, I may be biased because I grew up playing this, but this is one of my fi favorite fighting games. And it's not bad. I do see it dip every once in a while. For the most part, it is steady at 60, 59 FPS. Even if it dips to 48, this is a very playable game. Dude, I think he punched me before he even said go. Destroy. Ooh. 
thought I was gonna kill him with that last hit. All right. So you can see the hair on my character. It's a little bit glitchy. And I've noticed this on a lot of systems running this in an emulator. Around the uh, pants ankle, there's a little glitching also. I don't see it right now, but in the cutscenes, well, not cutscenes, but the end scenes after you beat a character, you'll see it. Other than that, it does look really good and it plays fine. So this is definitely playable on the MXQ. We're going to back out. Next up, we're gonna run Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. Okay, so frames per second here. You can actually run this game with the Open G without the OpenGL plugin. It does look a little pixelated, but it is playable. We'll go to Snow Go. I love Crash. E3 2016, they tried to reintroduce him to Skylanders, and he just looks funky to me. It's not the same Crash. This box does emulation very well. I'm surprised for the price uh, that I was able to run any of these. If you can't afford an Nvidia Shield TV console, I suggest getting one of these for now. What I kind of like to do is use cheaper units because I see these reviewers online, they get the most expensive things sent to them. And then they review it. I, I, it took me a long time to fork out $200 for the NVIDIA Shield TV console. I, I wanted one when it came out. I kind of just let it go for a little while. So I kind of just let it go for a little while. I didn't think about it much. And then about a, I don't know, eight months later, I finally... Got one. I finally decided to get one. And now that I spent the $200 on it, I kind of regret the purchase. It is a very powerful unit. I love it, but I hate Android TV. I hate the interface. It's clunky to me. I go to try to, you know, stop an app. And I have to go back to the front page, navigate back through, go to my launcher because all the stuff that I like to use isn't compatible with the Android TV lean back launcher. Obviously, you're going to get way better performance out of the Shield console. But the $200 mark is just crazy for what it is. Very nice. Runs really good on here. Oh, I thought that was the end there. Okay, so we're going to back out of here and try another game.
Let's try high brow gag and pure shooting. Harmful Park. I love this game. This is a so-called cute em up game. Actually, this is one of my favorite shooters. So we got our ice cream laser. So I guess the premise behind this was harmful theme park. Everything's trying to kill you. So you can switch your weapon as you see I've been doing. And if you look at the top right hand corner of the screen, right beside the 1P, the one player mark, I have the potato shooter, so I'm shooting french fries, I guess. Ice for ice cream. Pie, obviously, throw on pie. Jerry, we're throwing jerry beans. I guess it was supposed to be jelly beans, but this is a Japanese game and translation gets lost. I've never had a jerry bean. If there is such thing as jerry beans, let me know, guys. So my french fry shooter. And each one has its own special, so we throw in cakes out. If I change to my ice cream. Oh, I didn't mean to use another one. Ah, oh, shoot them out. We get upgraded. I got double ice creams. I love jerry beans though, they're so good. And I should have saved my special power ups. There are some weird creatures here. Oh, well, that's pretty much it, guys. You get through. There are some really crazy bosses. Um, I mean, you can just imagine. This is a Japanese shoot 'em up game, and they really made some really crazy ones. These have been dubbed cute 'em ups because of the art style. It's kind of cute. Oh my gosh, a giant. Oh, a shield, a jelly shield. Pretty cool, we're gonna back out of here. I love that game though. Two D fighting game. Uh, we'll do yeah. Let's do Dark Stalkers. Dark Stalkers three. So this game does take a little while to load, and we have some graphical errors here. We see the characters all have lines through them. Just try this really quick. It'll definitely run at a good frame rate. It, there's just going to be some 
graphical glitching. Okay, well, no, there we go. It does. It's definitely playable, just you got a lot of glitching going on. We'll back out of here. It's not a lot of glitching, it's just in the characters. Possibly turning OpenGL off would fix that. I don't know, but we'll try something else. Um, let's go Crash Team Racing. So I just wanted to get right into some racing. This is a kind of a fast-paced kart racing game for the PlayStation. We'll see how it handles it. With the OpenGL plugin on, they look it looks really great and it's running perfectly. Need my there we go. No problems here, 60 FPS. I expected as much, I just wanted to test it out. So I'll run through here a little bit more, we'll try one last game, and then that'll be it for this video. Last one for this video, we will try Tekken 3. I would do Resident Evil Nemesis, but it just drags out so much. Ah, got trouble here. So I'm going to go back, we'll toggle, Round one. Fight. We're going to turn off OpenGL and see if it helps. Definitely helped with the selection screen here. We'll see how the frame rate is with just hardware rendering on. 
There's a bunch of settings you can change. You can change the internal resolution. And we have a lower frame rate. So I'm wondering if I turn down the, I'm sure if I turn the internal resolution down a bit, we could get full speed out of this. One, fight. So actually with the hardware rendering, I just turned on the threading and it sped up tremendously. It's actually very playable now. We're still getting a couple dips down in the mid 55s, but it's not as bad as it was. So certain games you'll just have to experiment with. It's no big deal. This is this is why I do it. I like to mess around with the settings, you know. And I'm getting destroyed here. It's actually just playing off of my game capture. It's got a little lag. My game capture screen. Jin is just tearing me up, man. Okay, guys. That's it for now. That was a few games tested using the EPSXE emulator running on the MXQ box. If you guys have any requests for games, let me know. Give me a list down below in the comments. Make a list, three, four, five games, and I'll make another video and test them out. If you have any requests for any other games running on pretty much any other emulator system, also, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. One other thing, guys. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe because I have a lot more coming. And like always, thanks for watching.